Okay, hey everyone. I um, I'm doing my next video in the the Grant Noble series. Grant has um, sent me four videos of a little French bulldog, and he's put a little bio as well about the um, situation where he's at at the moment um, with the little French bulldog. And again, I will attach those videos um, along with this video, um, <clears throat> so you can see. Uh, what he's talking about not only written down but also in in video so um what grant describes or grant what you describe in your in your um in what you write to me is a dog that you know is getting over aroused uh, again this is not grant's dog it's a client's dog the the dog is in fact very social in terms of um it's not aggressive to other dogs. It's not aggressive to people, but um, it's antisocial. As in, everything is just a hundred miles an hour, far too accel far too accelerated. It's a little pocket rocket. Um, it's screeching. It's a very vocal dog, so it's screeching to get what it wants. Um, if it can't get near another dog, it's screaming to try and get near that other dog. Now, when it gets to the dog, it doesn't do anything. Um, it will play, etc. And I might be over overexcited, but it's not like it's screaming to go to attack the other dog. Um, <clears throat> so the the advice that or the thinking that Grant has been doing is, you know, trying to get more engagement and play with the dog more, um, like with a ball, it likes a ball, trying to get it to 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 play with the dog more to build a, a better relationship between the dog and the owner. Um. Uh, and and from what I see from the videos, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it's not going. In my opinion, it's not going to cure the problem in any way. Um, so we have a dog that in the videos is in a big open area in a, in a park area, um, and and that's the the environment that the dog is in to to learn, to change behaviour. Um, is far too much for it at the beginning. Um, I would be asking how often is that dog walked with a pack of dogs? The dog is just in the park area um, on its leash and it's just it's walking along, but it's really, it's physically attached to Grant, but it's psychologically detached. It's scanning, it's all over the place. It's really um, <clears throat> high energy and just... <laughs> all the time <clears throat> so i wouldn't be dealing with that by going and building up engagement exercises by playing more ball with it because it's still just gonna there's nothing wrong with that but it's not going to sort the problem in fact it'd be something that i would not be focusing on so i'd be focusing on having the dog just learn to be calm and learning learning to be calm and bringing that energy level down uh, by challenging the brain more so I'd be trying to walk that dog with a pack of dogs in a migration mode and in, in a structured state. The dog has to just, it wants to be with dogs and it sees other dogs as, as affection. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to use that to my advantage, but I'm going to walk it in a structured way with a pack of dogs. Ideally, that's what I would do. Um, I would also be choosing a different environment initially. So I would definitely be looking for a more wooded area um an area like a forest with nice paths um maybe even to get getting the dog to swim um as well because that can drain physical energy but also challenge the brain a bit but really it just needs to learn to exist with other dogs rather than i wouldn't be letting it play with other dogs um I, i'd be um my, my focus initially would be that it just learns to exist and be with other dogs because it can cause like in itself its energy that it creates or or brings into a pack or to other dogs can that itself can just cause problems um it's far too um exuberant um or overzealous to to meet and uh, in the last little video that you sent me grant and, and you know what you're doing but you were there trying to like kind of you were taken to the side and then like here's the ball and cool and throw the ball and and, and the dog likes the ball, but he was he was still just totally drunk on everything around us. In fact, when you touched him, he was totally just like. Ah, 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 ah. So you're you're actually really reinforcing a, um, a, a, a an unwanted behaviour there. Um, the dog was you you were the dog you were of no interest 
uh, to the dog. You were just somebody that was holding the dog back. So we have to make the human more interesting. Um, I'd be really working a lot on place training, um, on the dog learning to be calm on place. I, I would even potentially, after I've done structure, in terms of the dog being, uh, structure is in challenging the mind, just being around other dogs, but being calm. So that'd be the pat walk um, in the wooded area. And if you, if you can't go with other dogs, then still I'd be, I, I, that's the areas that I would be walking the dog right now is more primal areas rather than big open spaces. Um, it's just far too distraction. And any other dogs or people they do see, everything's gonna be moving faster when it's a big open area. So, you know, there's there's gonna be joggers and, uh, and cyclists and, and dogs running, chasing balls and, and running and playing. And um, uh, uh, dogs on big open spaces, if they're not off leash, gonna be on flexi leads, you know, all over the place, running around or, or complete off leash. That's just far too, too much overload for that little Frenchie right now. So the dog just needs to learn to, you know, that dog needs to go hiking and, and have a good hike and, and ideally be with a pack of dogs and just, you know, the whole, as if it was Caesar walking them all or, you know, what you look at Sherry Lucas, she'd be taking a whole pack of them, just having them all walk together in the woods area. Um, so, and just like what you do, Grant, when you take the dogs, and I don't know if this is one of your clients in terms of the, you do dog walking with, but to benefit that dog, that dog needs to spend a lot of time with the thing that makes it drunk, which is, in this case, say, meeting dogs. Um, and just learning to chill out and just be, because that dog's going to get corrected the heck out of if you allow it to meet other dogs the way it meets that is very risky. So the dogs just need to learn to exist and just be with other dogs rather than, you know, oh no, I need to play with it and give it another job to do. Or no, you just need to calm everything right down. Um, structured walks, but in, in more wooded areas. Um, place training. I, then when I feel I'm doing these structured walks, I would take the, uh, when I, f I would trial and error. Um, I When I feel the dog, of course, knows place and is doing really well, I would then be with slow breaks, not fast breaks. Um, we're not looking to build speed and drive in this dog. And that's, again, the ball and the playing, and that's going to build speed and drive. Um, you can you want to, the dog to build the relationship with the owner, because in particular, but not by the owner representing excitement. And, yeah, there's your ball, and go. And, no, I want the dog to learn to be calm, submissive, not excited all the time. Um, excitement is your is kind of the enemy right now. That doesn't mean you're going to you know change the the personality or the nature of the dog, but you, you it definitely needs to learn to be calmer, much much calmer. That would de it definitely reminds me of like my Rex, um, who's you know you get four different energy levels. You get low, medium, high, very high. Yeah. And Rex, naturally, in younger days, was my ex rescued fighter, was a, a definitely a very high, higher, much higher than that Frenchie. And uh, so I would I wouldn't have went at the big in particular at the beginning until he was had passed the other levels. I would not be going to an environment like that to walk that dog. That is just um, it's just too hard. It's just you know it's not fair in the dog. It's not fair in you or the person walking the dog. You're not going to achieve success there. So, um, yeah, I would uh, focus on just the dog learning to be and just existing with each other. Uh, place training, you can then add in when you're doing distraction, go, right, we're, gonna, we're doing pretty well in place. I'm going to go back to this location, but we're not going to go. We're just going to stay where we are and you're just going to be on place. And you're just going to observe and take in, start to take in the excitement around you but you're not getting involved. You're getting, inv or you're getting involved by observing, not, you're not the center of attention because the dog has no manners and just wants to dive in and be the center of attention with everything that is around. So if I was then going to a location like that, it would be for the dog to uh, master place and to learn to chill out. So the reward itself is gonna be to meet the dog, but the dog has to be calm to meet the other dog, not overexcited. Uh, but one of the ways you're going to do that is that, that dog needs to, in a way, meet lots of dogs, but in more of a pack environment rather than one-to-one.
because that's just too much for that dog right now. You're better doing it using using your pack and, and to calm the dog right down. Um let me think anything else. Okay, so again your 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 focus was in the post was um do like exercises with the dog, play with the dog more to build more engagement. And again, there's nothing wrong with the owner doing that, but the owner and yourself, but the owner would benefit more from getting getting the dog to learn to be calm rather than just going, yeah, look, I can control your excitement. Well, it'd be much more benefit. If you, if you learn to control the excitement, you're still going, so you'll get a compliant dog that will follow the owner and not be straining on the leash. You've kind of already really got that, but you probably won't get rid of the screeching. Um, so we, we have to be able to just have the dog learn the, reinfor the, the, the reinforcement of being calm. We really want the dog to think that feels good, being calm. Whereas right now the dog's just like, when I'm drunk, that's the only time I feel good. So And that's how I get what I want, and we want to change that. So my, my focus wouldn't be on balls and playing. and my, my focus I'd be, I'd be wanting to know how the dog meets people when they come to the door. Um, in the home, that would be really interesting, and, and the level of control that uh, the, the owner has in the home, what the owner, the state of mind the owner rewards in the home, how the dog reacts when people are going by the fence in the garden, or the yard, you'd say, um, you know, that sort of thing. I would like to know how the dog reacts in those scenarios. So you're looking at, again, in the house, on the lead, off the lead. So really, how is the dog in its own environment? And if they can't control that level of excitement, that arousal on introductions, in its own environment then you know where you were in those videos is disneyland so you're never going to accomplish it there no matter what tool you're using you, you the dog has to learn to be calm place is going to be a great way to just control where the body is but the and you said the dog takes a good correction um when it's not so aroused so yeah just focus on calm things rather than and the dog just learning to calm down and chill um, rather than necessarily let's get loads of let's get the ball out and let's do loads of running exercises. What you're going to do there is just create an athlete with no with no limit, um, and that's just it won't. I, in my experience, I don't think that would make any any difference if you do that. It's not going to ruin the relationship. It, the dog's going to have a great relationship with the owner, but it's not. I, I don't. I wouldn't see it getting rid of the issue that the screeching etc. To meet other dogs. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys.